Welcome back to another Olive video editing tutorial. In this video, we're going to get a lot more familiar with the timeline and some of the tools. We're going to be doing a basic video edit project using Olive. So to get started, I'm going to bring in some media. I'm going to right click in this project area. Let me first zoom in here. I'll right click in this project area and go to import. And that brings up this dialog on my computer where I can choose different media to bring in. I can look at music. Maybe I'll add this music file called more jazz guitar. I can right click again and go to import and I can find an image file. It's just a picture of me sitting on a couch. It's a JPEG file. And I can right click again and go to import and I can grab a, a video file if I want. We'll do this one that we looked at last time. It's a .mp4 video file that has video and audio. Uh, and in this view here, we talked about this a little bit last time, we can toggle between these different views. So this list view furthest to the right shows the most information and the largest thumbnail. Um, so I like to be in this view. It tells some information about where the file is being stored, what type of file it is, uh, and what quality and size it is. To view one of these, if we just double click this one, it brings it over here in the media viewer. Let me zoom out so we can see the whole thing. By default, this is on effects. So if you're not seeing that, make sure you're toggling between these two tabs. Um, and we see effects is empty right now because we don't have anything in our timeline. Before we can apply effects to any of these, we need to first put them in the timeline. So to put these in the timeline, there's a few things we can do. If we already have it loaded in the media viewer, we can just left click and drag it down to the timeline area, then unclick, and it brings it and sets it to the earliest point in our timeline. I'm going to drag one more thing. Another way we can do it is just by dragging from the project area down into the timeline. And the second object we bring in, well, I should mention, the first thing we brought in, it created, if you notice, a new item in our project area called sequence, sequence 01. So this sequence is what is being displayed over here in our sequence viewer. And what it is, it's kind of like a, a composite of all the media in our timeline. So if we drag down this now, and we drag down this audio file, we have all these different three things that we brought in, and they are now all in our sequence. And when we export our media, it's going to be this sequence that we that's that becomes exported, essentially. Um, I'm going to undo this because I kind of went a little quick there. To undo something, if ever you do something and you want to make it not happen, you can go to Edit, and then go to Undo, and just left click. It's also that shortcut. You can see the shortcut is Control Z. So you can hit Control Z on your keyboard to undo that. So we'll go Control Z, and it does an undo of the last action that we did. <clears throat> so now all we have down here is the picture. And I just want to show you what it's doing is displaying this picture for about three or four seconds. So if we hit play over here on our sequence viewer, we can see what our video project will look like. It'll just play this video and then go black. Um, in the timeline, you can zoom in and out by using these magnifying glasses. If we hit the zoom in, it makes this look appear larger to us, but it's still only being displayed for three. Uh, we can we can click this red playhead and go to the end and see exactly how long it is. So three point one seconds, or three, yeah, well three ten. I think that's 3.1 seconds. And so uh, go ahead and, and do that. Get familiar with moving this playhead around and zooming in and out. If you bring in a two hour full featured movie um, instead of a three second clip, it's gonna be way off the, off the timeline and you'll need to use this scroll across the bottom to find it. So let me add this in here. So now that we have a video here that's longer than our view area on the timeline, uh, this bar appears across the bottom. We can left click and hold and we can scroll over clear to the end of our video or, or of our media project. And then we can scroll all the way back to the beginning too. Um, if we just want to see the whole thing start to finish in the timeline, we can zoom out with this magnifying glass. And then we can see the whole thing. This is the beginning. And we can click up here. This is the end. If you're having issues getting this playhead to move around, um, it's, you have to click up here in these dashes and by these times. So you can see the, the, these numbers here show us the time of the of the timeline, 35.29 uh, seconds. So this is 35 seconds in, this is 29 seconds in. Uh, and so, and when it gets to a one here, that'll be one minute, 29 seconds. And these are the hours. So hours, minutes, seconds, and then fractions of seconds. Um, 
But to, to change this around, you'll need to click up here. If we click down here, we see that red line, that playhead doesn't move. You have to be clicking up in the time area. Uh, and then to play, we can just push the space bar on the keyboard. It's what I like to do. Just going just like this. It just or you can click the play button over here in the sequence viewer. I'm doing greens except um, and I always get confused and I'll click the play button here sometimes and then nothing happens because this is our media viewer. So what this is doing is playing the media over here. So for the, because I get mess that mess up sometimes doing that, what I'll do is ho hover over between the two and I'll make this one a lot smaller. I like to make my media viewer smaller and my sequence viewer larger so that I can um, remember which one is kind of the main one I'm working with. Okay, um, let's get back down here to the timeline. So did you notice when we brought this video in, it showed two different things. We have our video, and then we also have this strange other bar with some like waves in it. That's our audio uh, file, or our audio track from the video. So when we play the video here, it plays the, next thing I want to the video, switches in. and we can also hear the audio. Uh, they're tied together, so if we left click and hold, we can move this around from right to left on this track, and it will move the audio with it. If we want to move our picture, we can move our picture. If we want to see what the picture looks like, see when I click on it, it doesn't show up over here. That's because the playhead's not directly over it. We just click and move the playhead to directly over it, and then we can see the, what is happening at this instant in the timeline. Um, so let's say we wanted to, um, let's just do a basic edit here. Let's say we want this picture to be at the end of the video and not at the beginning of the video. We can just left click and drag it all the way to the end and put it right there. But now we have a problem. We have some blank space at the beginning of our video because we can drag this red playhead all the way to the beginning or we can click this little icon here that sends the playhead back to the beginning of the timeline. And now if we hit play, we're going to see like a lot of black space and then our video starts. So we need to get rid of that black space. Um, th there's a, a quick way to do it in Olive. We just right click and then we say ripple delete empty space and that gets rid of it. I can hit control Z on my keyboard because another way we could do it is just click and select. So we left click and select this portion of video in the timeline and then drag it to the beginning. And then we can come back over to this picture because now we have a gap here. Our video is going to end. We have a gap and then it'll get eventually to our picture. So now I can left click on the picture, click and hold, drag it till it comes to there. Um, by default, snapping is enabled, which is this little magnifying a uh, uh, little magnet. And so snapping makes it so that when we get to either the, the playhead or when we get to another piece of media, it'll snap and that, that uh, white line appears there. Oops, I resized my track. So that white line that's appearing vertically right there, that's showing me that we're snapping there and it makes it easier. Without that, if that's unclicked, um, it's not going to snap as easy. It'll be We have to really have a steady hand and try to get it right exactly on a certain line and we might mess up. So I recommend keeping snapping enabled. Um, I think we're going to I'm just going to export this project now. Um, you can play with some of these. So hover over. If you just hover over what they are, we have um, the edit tool, we have razor, we have the ripple tool. So we're going to learn all of these in the next couple videos, but I'm not going to do any more right now because I'm just going to show you uh, the saving and exporting process on Olive, and then we'll get to some of these other tools in the next video. Oh, we didn't even do the, the audio though. Let's just for fun, just to show you there's other tracks. So right now we're working with two tracks. We have one video track and one audio track. Um, if we want to bring over this audio file and just drag it down, we can put it down here. And it's there's like a yellow outline you can kind of see, but it's kind of hard to see right now. But now we have audio over top of our other audio. And you can have as many tracks as you want. We can drag this picture down. We can have a track here and a track here. We're going to talk more about tracks to delete. Just left click and hit the delete key on the keyboard. We're going to talk more about tracks, so don't get too carried away with that, but just know there are different tracks, and the track you're going to be on is kind of a yellow outline until you actually set it there. It shows kind of the space that your clip will occupy within that track. I'm going to hit the space bar, and we can listen. Now we have music playing along with our voice and, uh, and our video project. So to export this whole project, 
Um, export is, is the, the word used to actually get this video out to, in a format that we can share it with someone. If we go uh, top right hand corner, click on file, we have a couple options. We can save the project which all that's going to do, let's, let's do that first, that's a good idea. If you click save, it brings up the dialogue here and you can save. I, I'm in my videos folder and I already have three Olive projects. I have these ones here, it's a .ove file extension. So I'm just gonna call this one test2 and hit save. And now that Olive project is saved, but what it is, it's just a, uh, it's, this is it right here. So it's just an Olive, video project which means we can open it up in olive we can edit it but we if we were to send this file to someone they wouldn't be able to see our video um, and they wouldn't even be able to really work on our project unless we attached all the associated media with it um, we'll cover more on that in the future but to get this video in a shareable format we could upload to youtube or share with someone we need to go to file and we need to go to export and then so these are the export settings uh, you just probably want to leave all these the same, um, other than I always take my quality down to 18. The lower the number, the higher the quality on this CRF. By default, it's 36, which is just really bad quality. It's good for sharing over like a mobile phone or something. But if you want to do something, any quality at all, I set this to 18 right now. Leave everything else the same and then just hit export. And then it asks you where on your computer you want to save it. So I'll save mine in my videos folder and I'll just call it test and then we'll hit save. And then it starts exporting depending on the speed of your computer. This, I just have an i5 processor with like eight gig of RAM, nothing special, not even a super great graphics card. Although I don't even know if it's using graphics card to render this or not right now. Anyway, um, when this is done exporting, I'll, let me just pause the video and speed this up till it's completely done. It's gonna take about a minute to export. Okay, that just finished exporting. Uh, so now we can go find that on the computer. So I'll minimize all of right now. I'll go to my file explorer. I'll go to videos and what I call it? Test, test, is this it? Yeah, so we can click on it and play this video on the computer. The next thing I want to do is click and then we can go to the end of it and make sure that it has that picture of me. So it jumps like from the video to that picture of me. So there you have it. And so this, and the video we did, we can click, right click and go to properties and see the size of it, it's 36 meg. So this is actually, yeah, it's a, it's a good quality. And then it's a .mp4 file. Anyway, um, hopefully you found that informative. It's always hard at the beginning of tutorials like this. I feel like I'm just giving you way too much information too quickly. So um, feel free to skip ahead if some of this is too basic for you. Um, but go ahead and we'll check out the next video where we're gonna be going over a lot more of these tools in the timeline and uh, getting more familiar with Olive. Thanks for watching, catch you in the next video.